everybody. Welcome to Opus Hours uh, this Tuesday. Um, today we're going to be looking at a few concepts that work together. We're going to be using an object that might normally be uploaded as a simple furniture item, but we're going to make it do something. We're going to make it clickable and do something when you click on it. So uh, in our example that I'm going to show you, what will happen is you'll click on the item, on an object, a message will flash on the screen, some audio will play and the message flashing will happen five times and then stop. Uh, so that's just the intention for the example, but this um, can apply to things like a trigger and a door to open. We've done that before in different ways, but you can make a door clickable so it would open rather than automatically open. You can, uh, I'm trying to think of other examples of things you can click on, but you, you're all virtual world people, so uh, you would obviously know that. So there's many applications for this. What we're going to do is start with our object. And if you look at my project area here, I've already set up a clickable tutorial folder with all the bits and pieces that we're going to need. The first thing is the prop is a gold pot. I'm going to drag that into our scene there. Um, that can be anything. You can make it a simple cube. It can be a piece of furniture, a chair, a table, um, a, a button. It can be anything. So anything can be made clickable, but there might be various different ways that you do it. And we're covering the most common method today. So um, the whole thing will be made up by this gold pot prop that you see, we're going to add a clickable activator to it, a UI menu, an animation, and an audio source. These are all quite simple, but there's a few different parts that we need to make to make the whole thing gel together. So we've got our object. The first thing we need to do is add a collider to it, which will enable it for us to click on. And because of its shape being circular, we can add a circular or a spherical. Uh, sphere collider. So we're going to do that first. Once we've added it, we'll just make a couple of changes to it, not many. Now here, to make a collider become clickable so that it can activate something, you need to set it as a trigger. And what that says is if anything collides with or clicks on, it, it's going to trigger an event to happen, which we can then control. So that's the first thing. Um, the second part we need to add is a clickable activator component, which actually handles us clicking on something and what to do afterwards. So we can find that and a few things to put in here. Um, we need to add some events, which is what the prop will do when we click on it. So we want it to bring up a message spin or flash that message and play an audio source. So there's three things. So we'll need at least three things added in here. We're going to probably need a fourth. We'll come to that in a moment. So the first is we drop an object into this slot here, and then we can drop this list down when we've got something in the object box, and it will give us the options that we can do on that object. So the first thing we want here is, let me just check, we want an audio source. Now we haven't made an audio source. We'll do that. We're going to create an empty object. We're going to call it audio source. We're going to add an audio source component. Which is that one. There's some audio I prepared earlier, which um, you can have a listen to now so we know what's going in there. No magic found in this pod. Okay, so that's what you're going to click. It's a gold pot. We're going to click it, and we're trying to find the magic pot. And this is a failure. This this particular one we're making today, this gold pot is going to say there's no magic in here and um, then dismiss the message. So we go back to our audio source we've just created. We need to drop the audio clip into this bit here. So let's drag that across in there. That's all we need to do here. Um, now we can drag that audio source into our clickable activator here, which is the first thing. So drop the audio source. And then we want to drop the list, go to the audio source again, and that will pop up a list of what we can do. What we can actually do is here, play the audio clip. 
So at the moment, the idea is when we click on the uh, gold pot, this audio is going to play. And then the second uh, added object here is going to control a raw image. Now, a raw image is um, a component of the UI menu. That means uh, a message that might come up uh, that isn't sort of on an object in world. Uh, it's like your overlay for your friends list, etc. Um, we haven't made that yet. So we're now we need to set up the menu before we can add the next part in here. So we will create a UI canvas. In fact, a shortcut, create the panel and the canvas automatically gets made and we need a panel anyway. So we'll do that. So let's create the canvas and the panel. We need to go back to the canvas and we need to look at the options we've got here. We can change it to show in world, which would be to line up on an object so that when you walked around the object, the words would stay on that face of the object. So you wouldn't see it if you stood behind it. Uh, but screen space is what we want for the moment that overlays in the front of the screen outside of the world in the same way that you see all of the menu items at the moment. So that's screen space overlay. Um, the different options in here, you don't really need those. Uh, apart from scale factor, the canvas scaler is how to tell it to resize when people have different screen sizes. So constant pixel size means that if you had your screen resolution set to something, you know, archaic, like 640 by 480, then the message is going to look too large. And equally, if you've got a 4K monitor, if we set the size um, to something that's reasonably small, when you look at it on a 4K monitor, it's going to be so tiny you can't see it. You actually need to scale with the screen size and fix it into the center, into place. Now, to do that, we're going to switch to the game view and turn off the camera that I have in this scene because then we can see this display one, no cameras rendering, but we should be able to see the uh, UI menu in a moment. Let me just explain. So we're now looking in the scene view and I've zoomed out so we can see the whole representation of the screen. And uh, if we put things in here, it would cover up the whole game. So we don't want that. We want to reduce the size of the panel to uh, somewhere in the center. Like that will resize perfectly in a moment. We're going to also add onto the panel, we're going to add a UI raw image, which will allow us just to drop a texture, which will have some words on it, uh, into the slot when we're ready. So raw image. Now you can see the area the image will go in. If we look back in the game view, you can now see that we can see the UI menu um, over the display one no camera rendering it's the square in the center um, we can now go to the panel and we're going to in the scene view try and get the panel resized to fit that same display one no cameras rendering box i need to split my screen so bear with me so we can see both there so the idea is to get the inner box to uh, be roughly the height at least of the outer dark box so we can make sure we're on the panel and now resize here and you'll see it changes so we can just stop it at the edge of the display one message and do the same with the other side and you know you're within a few millimeters in the dead center of the screen now we move the bot bottom up Bring whoops it's back on the panel and bring it down again roughly there and now we can resize the raw image uh, grab the corner uh, it's not resizing uh, as with the aspect ratio but that doesn't matter you'll see why in a moment uh, now on the raw image we need to drop the texture into this slot here which is this texture we're going to drag it over. Whoops, I clicked on it. Didn't want to do that. I want to be on raw image and then just drag. There we go. We can now play around with the aspect ratio to get it whatever size we want. So we can just make the screen fill up a bit. 
Now, the background panel, we now don't really want. We can disable the image there on that component, which then makes just the words appear with no box or anything interfering with it. So that's that part done. We can switch back to normal scene view. We'll just shrink the game view out of the way. And so um, the goal, let's go back to our gold item down there. Now we've got a raw image. We want that raw image dragged into the event here. So that raw image didn't drop. Raw image. And uh, the idea of that raw image is that it needs to flash. So now that we've dropped that into place, we're going to go back to where the raw image was here. And we're going to animate this so it flashes on and off. To animate, I've got the animation window at the bottom here. We need to be on the object we want to animate and we need to create an animation. I'm going to call it Flasher. And now we've got a empty animation clip window. We go into set key mode or, or to record mode. So the first thing that's happened is because we've enabled the uh, because I ticked and unticked the raw image, it creates what it thinks is a um, a keyframe, even though I've just set it back to what it was originally. So it just fools this in kicking off this setting up a keyframe. So the, what we need to do is alternate on and advance and turn it off and then if we play that it's going to go through three states which is the messages off messages on and then the messages off again we can show that as an example i hope by pressing play see that flashing that's just repeating through now just to quickly save time i'm going to copy the last two keyframes by control c and then i can paste and paste and paste and finally that should give us five seconds of flashing so let's just see that wind to the beginning it's come out of record mode back to the beginning again to there and then press play and you'll see we've got what we want We don't want it to keep repeating. We want it to turn off at the end, but we do that elsewhere. So our animation is there. Um, we can check that because our animation should have been created. Uh, what did we set up as flasher? I think we should have a flasher controller created. If not, we've got the raw clip. There's the raw clip flasher we just uh, want to uncheck loop time so it doesn't repeat when we're actually in world it will just flash five seconds and then stop so we go back to our gold item we go back to our clickable activator i got them in the wrong order um so i'm going to juggle these around the first thing we need in here is the raw image um component here itself we need to get that turned on we do that and dragging that into there and just overriding what was there before that turns on the flashing texture by setting that okay then we have the audio source which needs to just play and we can add the uh, raw image into the runtime object and then play that animation that we created on it here um, play and then we want the string title which i said was flasher okay um now that in itself would work the first time around 
But the problem is, what if you click the gold pot a second time? You've stopped the animation at the end because you didn't want it to loop. And that's not really what you want, because that means when somebody, uh, if they click it a second time, it's not going to flash. So that's not quite all we need. What we actually need is a, a kind of a rewind or reset function in here to make the animation go back to the beginning before we play it. We can do that by again going to the animator here and then da -da 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 -da, rebind is the phrase that we need. That will reset up. We add that fourth box I said I think we need. We add raw image again because we've now reset the animation but we now also need to play it finally. So that goes in there and this time we go to animator and play and uh, just put the flasher in again. There you go. So that's all we need for that section. Um, we've created the canvas and the audio source finally just needs to be set. I forgot to do that. Output for the audio source generally for this kind of thing would be under SFX, which means you guys can turn it down volume wise on your SFX control in world. That's uh, pretty much all the components. I think they're all connected together. I'm not 100% sure because of some of the issues that we've had. So what we'll do is save our scene there and just play this and we'll see if I'm magic and got it right or if um, I need to go back to school and learn again. There we go. <laughs> yeah. OK. First thing is the audio source triggered when we started, so that was wrong. Yeah, so we've got some stuff happening, but it didn't quite work as we expected. Let's have now have a look at what we've got. So audio source, firstly, uh, does not want play on awake ticked. So, so we uncheck that. That will stop the sound coming up. Now, the raw image, um, I'm not sure what was happening, so we're going to run it again, knowing the sound will play correctly. Yeah, it's, um, but it's probably because the raw image is on and the animator is on, so it's just going to run that animation straight away. Of course, that bit needs to be turned off, I believe. Let's just try that. It won't take as long this time. Right, so our flasher is happening. We don't want that to happen. If you just look at the gold pot, you can see that, uh, hopefully you can see, um, try to zoom in a bit, that the gold pot is actually getting a blue circle around it when I move over it, and that little tooltip underneath is saying click to activate. Can you see that? So that is now clickable. We can click it, and let, I think it should play the audio. No magic there you go. found in this part. Yep. So we're nearly there, and I think you're right, Simon. I think that last bit is possibly that um, the animator needs to be off. I need to start position. No. Uh, yeah. Off. Yeah. We're not, we're not turning the animator on though in the in the event thing. I think it's that that raw image is what needs to be enabled. I think that might need to be off. Oh, okay. Let's try it like that. Just play. Okay, the first thing it notices is nothing has happened. That's yeah. good, because nothing should happen. Now let's click the activator. No magic found in yeah. this part. Five flashes and it should go. And all being well, that rebind part we added in will reset everything when we click again. No magic found in this part. There you go. So what we did today was we took an object, we applied a clickable activator, which allows it to be clicked in world to do something. We invented a UI menu that simply presented a message that says no magic found in this pot as an alert to the user that they haven't found what they're looking for. The sound, the audio source, obviously is a buzzer and the guy saying no magic found in this pot. We made an animation to flash it. <laughs> we set up an audio source. 
So just for this one simple thing, we've used about five or six different sign space components that interact and work together to actually make a one cohesive whole prop. Um, and if you look in the Welcome Centre and some other regions over the weekend, you'll see this prop being used because it's going to form part of our St. Patrick's Day and the weekend.